kind of went on another journey the past, I don't know, two or three weeks. Uh, if you get into sort of retro computing and old computers, you're going to find that serial consoles and serial ports are something that you're going to run across quite frequently. One of sort of the modern examples of retro modern, I guess you could say, is the RC2014 series of computers. This is an RC2014 Mini. It's Z80, uh, runs basic. I think this runs CPM or can run CPM or one of them can. But on here is uh, a serial port for the console. And that's where you do your input output. You get a keyboard, mouse, whatever. Most common way nowadays is to get a USB to TTL serial adapter. In fact, these come with one and you just load up TerraTerm or Putty on your computer or Minicom on Linux or whatever you want. And you get a serial console off this and you can do stuff. Well, you know, when you start having other uh, old computers, you'll find that you don't have the, the, the TTL serial, which I'll get into is, is distinctly different from what we used to have years ago when I started in the industry, which is RS-232. You know, DB9 or DB25 connector running at you know, some lower baud rate, like in our time was 300 baud, you know, up to 48 or 9600, or nowadays 115 too. But I, I digress. One of the things I wanted was I wanted a, a standalone terminal that was, you know, I'd love to have an old VT320 or 420, but I don't. So I want some sort of modern replacement for it, which I started building up here. Uh, wrong way, Darren. Which way do you go? <laughs> there. The idea was VGA terminal sorry, VGA monitor, or you could use HDMI, but I use VGA because it tends to work better on some of the stuff. And uh, an, an old deck keyboard to go with. The idea is, uh, I discovered this little thing, and that's kind of what I'm going to go over, is the TTGO ESP32 VGA board, which is uh, really kind of neat, which you can see here is, it is an ESP32 on there, and it's got a VGA output on that side, and it's got PS2 inputs on that side for keyboard and mouse. Uh, it also seems to have, oh, it's got audio too, by the way. And you can hook up a battery to it, so it's battery powered. And I think you can run it off another 5 volts. Like, so in my case, I'm powering it off the USB, and that's also what you use to program it. Uh, you can put a micro SD card in here. I haven't used that yet. But the other interesting thing is... You can install some headers and you get serial output from it, TTL serial, which in this case, you can plug this directly into this and it will work. That's what these are for. And I'll kind of show you how to do it and how to set it up. The other side of this is you can use one of these, which is a TTL to RS-232 adapter. So you could then use this with serial to something like over there, like the Naboo with a serial card and get a console off CPM. Those sorts of things. I'm sure there's other stuff too, but that's the idea. So I'm going to walk through how I built these. I have two. I have a TTL version and an RS-232 version. I will add some of the options for adding additional like flow control, which you can add. Some of these little TTL adapters don't have the RTS and CTS signals pulled through. Other ones do. And I'll show how I can connect to various stuff. And in fact, another one is you could use this to get a serial port off a Raspberry Pi and get a console on there. So I'll show that as well. Uh, again, kind of the journey. I hope to document some of the stuff that I've learned in this process. I'll try and put markers on each option in this video. And if you're interested, hang out and learn. Here we go. And here we are. And this is kind of where the whole thing started with when I discovered this. Somebody else has done this before. I'm not the first one. I'm just kind of putting my input on here. But the FabGL library is where this all started at. It is a VGA graphics library for the ESP32 that this person has put together for Brizio Divitorio. And it is actually 
quite complete. And what kind of caught me on this was somebody had built like a an IBM PS2 type of computer on this board. Oh, here it is, running sort of uh, free DOS on it, which seemed kind of cool. And then I went through all the other stuff, and lo and behold, one of these is a terminal, and that interested me, especially when using it with something like, you know, an Altair or an Imzai or Nabu or, you know, other computers, right? But that's where it started. And this whole thing, you can see it's uh, the FabGL library. It's hosted on GitHub. Here is the source code, which is what we're going to use. And we're going to build it and put it on the board here. Uh, and then what looks like happened is he had a, a dev board kind of built up and then... I think this company, maybe he contacted them, they worked together or something, but long of the short of TLDR is Lily Go put together sort of a production version of uh, what looks like his dev board. You know, I've seen his dev boards around too, and they were for sale at one point. They're rather large dev boards. But then looks like they productionized it. And this is the one that I started building with. Uh, you can get them, you know, $11 from overseas, and if you're willing to wait, you know, a couple of weeks after, like, Chinese New Year, uh, you can get them rather low cost, uh, shipped over, you know, to the U.S. from, uh, I'm pretty sure they're coming from China. But that's the board that we're going to be using here. They are available on Amazon, as you can see, um, about double the cost almost. I think I've got them for, like, 18 or so with the 5%. Um, take a little while to show up. They're not quick, but... And you can see, you know, it takes about two or three weeks to show up. I wonder if they actually come from China here. Maybe. I don't know. But as you can see, this is the board, and that's what we're going to start with. Uh, in addition to that, what I used for the RS-232 interface, the one that I settled in on is a version of the Max 3232 chip on a PCB with a DB9. And that's what we'll go through in the example that I'm going to show you on how to set it up. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be using is my RC2014. I have like two or three of them. And I might connect it up to a couple of other things to show some examples. Like you can use it on a, on a Raspberry Pi for, or other Linux boxes with a terminal. Cisco router, Cisco switch. I got a cable for that. There's some other stuff you can do with it. But that's kind of the overall. And here's the two boards. This is the... Um, RS-232 version, and I'll add, there are some 3D printable cases out on the internet for this. Uh, I'll try to remember to include links for all of this stuff in this video. Just, if I don't, ask me and I'll put it in. But here's the DB9 in a case, and here's the uh, sort of serial TTL version. Uh, and this is the case it goes in. And uh, well, at the end, they're going to be locked up in their cases. Uh, and that's kind of where it is. And I think we'll move on to... Uh, Kind of some descriptions here. Well, I realized my video light was off here, so if everything's brighter, that's why. You know, the first thing we have to do is build the software and get it loaded on here. Uh, if you go into that, put into a GitHub, now let's pull that up here. Where is it at? Um, do a git clone under examples. Uh, VGA, and there are other ones, but there's also the ANSI terminal example, and that's the one I'm going to be using here. Do a git clone, pull it down. Uh, you'll have to, if, and I'm using Arduino Studio too, by the way. You'll have to add in the ESP32 library for the Arduino Studio. Uh, I have not tried this with other things in VS Code. I am using VS, uh, sorry, um, Arduino for this. Add that, and then connect the board up. And a couple things you'll have to do under, set your port. Um, for the board, use the ESP32 dev module, this one right here. And the other one is, do, 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 set your core frequency. I set it for basically the maximum with um, Wi-Fi. Uh, this one, partition scheme. Uh, it has a different setting in here out of the box for the Arduino. You have to set it up for this. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there is a pragma in here or somewhere that will remind you that you have to do that. 
It might not be this one that requires it, but one of the examples does. So I just set it, and I'm using it right now, and it seems to work. You don't have to change anything in the code unless you want to. Everything seems to work, or everything for me at least has worked out of the box. And then select your COM port. I think I'm in COM 10 on this one. We'll find out in a minute. You know, let's just see. Let's do a uh, get board info. All right, well, we can get the board info. Build it and upload it. Uh, I, right now, so I am connected to an HDMI KVM uh, that runs into uh, an Elgato capture board. Uh, I did have issues with various HDMI or VGA to HDMI adapters. This is the one that I found that works with this board and it works really well. You do have to supply USB power uh, because it is, you know, coming out HDMI and the VGA doesn't supply power to the adapter. So you have to do that. Uh, in this case, I'll, again, I'll try and include links for this stuff, but it is on Amazon. Um, doesn't say who the maker is on it, unfortunately. I'll have to find the link. But we'll connect that up. It's done, oh, it's done uploading and it's resetting. Well, let's see what it looks like. Uh, and there it is. So it uh, one of the settings in the code you can do is to uh, whether, actually there's a setting too. So if you have 12 on the keyboard, you can see the setup options. And down here, show info, you can turn on and off and that will show this stuff on startup. I found it to be helpful. Uh, and there, I mean, that's what it is. That's, you get a terminal, and what's interesting is the settings are, you know, it is sort of a graphical interface, and you do have mouse control. Uh, tab does work, right, like it does everywhere else. I have set it up to have a different foreground color, and I, it's now set up for my stuff, which uh, this is pretty close to defaults. And then the board's running, and that's really it. And now you've got a terminal board, and... Uh, HDMI or VGA output, and you can basically do whatever you want with it. Doesn't take long to compile, works pretty well, so now we'll go on to the serial communications. All right, the first sort of option that you can do with this, I'm going to use the RC2014 as the example. So let's say you have some modern, even an Arduino with uh, a TTL serial interface. All you need to do is connect up the so some of the pins here, if you notice, I've got, uh, they're kind of hard to tell um, on which ones they are. And I'll use these examples here. Um, so here's the ports down here. They're not great labeled. Uh, on the back, they are. On the, on the other side, they're not. So in my case, I have these two pins right here are the transmit and receive. And those are in the setup in the software on the board, which uh, I can show you later. And then ground and we don't need the, the VCC in this case. So I've only got three of these pins running over to the RC2014. Uh, the RC2014 is being powered by an external 5 volt right now. Uh, it is 3.3, not 5 on there, so we won't use it. But three of these pins can be used. So I soldered on, you know, some headers, attached some, some wires, jumpers, and you can see TX, RX, and ground are connected. Note that we don't have any flow control which for this sort of thing we don't really need at some point we might but not right now uh, and then tx rx and ground are connected on the vga32 board and if we switch over let's do a let's say help there is the rom monitor on the the rc2014 working great uh, so if we go in here you can see uh, here's where we set the pins, right there. So you have some options. I am using uh, 2 and 34, which is the default. And that those are the ones that you can see in that picture are the, those two right here. So that says 34 and 2, IO2 and IO34 are those two. And there's the RC2014 option. Um, I did learn in this process that there is a distinct difference between TTL serial and RS-232 serial. I thought it was just voltage. I was wrong. It is also an inversion of the logic level. So zero equals one in this case, and the two don't work together, and you get some interesting garbage 
when you do it the, when you don't do it correctly. Which um, I, when we get on the RS two thirty two side, I'll show some. Um, what else could you do with this? I mean, that's really about it. So now you got a, a VGA terminal on some type of TTL serial board, and that's really all it's good for. You know, you could probably put a modem on there or something. I don't know, but there's example one. All right, next up, we're going to start getting into the serial options now. So here's where it kind of gets weird. The serial TTL is pretty direct, straightforward. You just plug the cables in and you go. If you want to do real RS-232, you have to start getting into um, TTL to RS-232 converters. Uh, the chip that I've seen is predominant right now for this sort of thing is this 3232. And there are various um, sort of boards you can get that carry it or you can design your own. Um, the one thing that you have to notice here, and this is what I was talking about, is the timing on the two. And they are quite different, as you can see. Uh, RS-232 is here and TTL serial here. This is a really good article on SparkFun's website. And you can see there's an inverter between the two. Uh, if you don't do it right, you'll get garbage, and this is probably why. Uh, this is a really good article. Uh, do a search, basically Google for like RS-232 versus um, TTL serial timing and this will come up. And this was extremely helpful to me. And it has some samples on you know, how uh, different chipset, but similar idea. Um, you could probably do it with, you know, just logic level shifters. Um, problem is if you need five volts versus no, you don't, um, which in this case I needed. So these boards have like a charge pump on it, things like that. But anyways, I sort of went off uh, the side there. Here is the same board, the, the Lily Go, with one of the Max 2285 boards. And again, another 3D printable case I found on the internet. There are various versions of this board that could be used, and I'll experiment with some of them later. Here is one that is super tiny, uh, which would really fit in a case well. And it also has uh, RTS and CTS lines on it, so in theory you could have some flow control. Uh, this is the one that I ended up settling in on. It's available on Amazon, like a pack of 10 for like 20 bucks or something. It is the Max 3232. Uh, there are some spare channels on here, so in theory you could uh, wire up CTS and RTS, but it's not. I don't need it right now, so it didn't matter. Although here are a couple of boards that uh, male and female, DTE versus DCE, and already have RTS and CTS pinned out, which, you know, I just, I don't think that'll fit in here. Uh, no, it won't, but I bought them. I might use them for something else. We'll see. Uh, you have some options. That's kind of the takeaway here is uh, you have various options in these adapter boards. This is really kind of nice that it's so small. I mean, it's like that, but smaller. Uh, this is the one that I've used. So we'll set this aside. So here's the board plugged in, same code, same flash, same everything. Uh, the only difference is it's running the, the DB9 serial out. So what I'm going to do for this demo is we're going to show how you can get a, a serial, co serial port or console on a, on a Raspberry Pi. In theory, it could be anywhere else. So to get real RS-232, I have this USB cable coming out of a Raspberry Pi. Uh, with a gender changer on it. So this is uh, on the Raspberry Pi as USB 1 for a device, I think. And then I just have a cable coming down here. Coming in, and let's see. Connect power. Let's do a switch. Let's go into the Raspberry Pi. Let's just double check. Uh, let's look. Looks like USB 1 is still connected. And what I'm going to do is spawn a Getty on that port. So what I did was yeah, set the terminal STTY on USB 1 to 115.2 and then started a Getty on USB 1, which should give us a login service on that port. And let's hit enter. And there it is. So now if we look at something running on there, I'll switch it over to full side. That is what it looks like. And if I go on here,
Yeah, I mean, it's actually kind of zippy. It looks pretty good. Uh, I would bet H top probably doesn't look great. Nope. Eh, not bad. I bet that could be mucked with a little bit. But of course, things like top work. You could use pine if you really want to, you know, go back. If you're pining, haha, <laughs> for some old days, send some email with pine. Uh, and that would be what is one thing you could do with it. So the USB cable, uh, this is real RS-232. So in theory right now, with the way this is set up, I could take this and, you know, through a series of gender changers, null modem, whatever's needed. So, yeah, you know, get yourself an assortment of, you know, get a null modem adapter, a couple of them. Get some gender changers, get some serial cables, which that's what I'm using right here, just a straight through a, a DB9 to the, just so I can get it connected. Yeah, and get some of those and pick it up and you'll have some RS-232 stuff laying around. Um, I, you know, I could show what it looks like when uh, it's done wrong. Uh, that might be an option. Um, yeah, let me see how I could do that. I, I could show an example of what TTL and RS-232 should not look like to you. Maybe. We'll see. Well, that's funny. It was broken for so long, I forgot how it was broken. So I was unable to show what it looks like when you have RS-232 and serial TTL hooked up incorrectly. Let's just say, after you, if you verified all your settings and it looks like there's garbage on the screen, you're probably doing it wrong. Wish I could show it. I got a video, but it's not great. Anyways, so that's kind of the brief overview of using this as a, a serial console. I put them back in their cases, and as you can see, so here is the the DB9 serial port version, and this can easily just connect, sit on the back of a monitor. In fact, the 3D print for this has like a a thing to hold it, like an actual holder. Remind me to put them in, in the video, Darren. Put them in the video. And here is the TTL version, so you can connect it up and just use it for whatever TTL serial you need. And that's two different ones. So I guess, you know, let's call it um, for about $50, two boards, RS-232 adapter, a couple of cables. For about $50, I've got two ways to connect that terminal, which that's going to be the final setup. And you know what? I'll end this video on showing what that looks like. Laters. Here it is, connected to the final destination, deck keyboard, Dell monitor, Linux box. And uh, we'll let you go with Moon Buggy. All right, come on, space to jump. It's not the best terminal, but you know, terminal, right? Uh, I got pretty far before I got up to like 56th place and crash. Anyways, there you go. Abort game, quit. You know, so I tried some other games. Pac-Man for console, nope. Oh, what else did I try? So Space Invaders and in loads, but these don't work. Weird. What else did I try? Oh. Tetris. Nope. Okay, well, you know, I don't know how much good it'll be, but there you go. There's a console. Take care. Laters.